What are the biggest everyday struggles of the average Asian American? We got a list for you today and let us know in the comments down below if you relate to any of it. Yeah, this was a post on Reddit. I think this is a really important one to cover because on this channel, we cover a lot of macro narratives, geopolitical things, big picture, bird's eye, almost like global winds, sands of time type stuff. However, something like child uh, child care prices is way more relevant to somebody who's like just raising kids focused on their family in the suburbs. Right, yeah. I mean, this video is going to be for, you know, the crowd that's got to go to Costco on Sundays and, and then they got to worry about their their mother or father moving in with them because they're retiring. But which Asian church are they going to? Yes, which Asian church are you going to? These are all like the average everyday struggles from Reddit and from average Asian Americans, not Asians that live like some weird, crazy life that are like, you know, even the ones who live in the city is different. But anyways, David, let's start with the list. You guys, please hit that like button right now and check out Smala. It goes well in your kitchen, on your foods. It's coming back very soon. Like we said, everybody lives a different life. Everybody lives in a different fishbowl. I think everybody can see what's going on in this country, but from the suburb to the inner city, it could vary a lot. Mm -hmm. Like you could be almost living in a different America, but you're probably like aware of what's going on with each other. But you know, we spend a lot of time in the suburbs still to this day. Um, somebody said, how to care for aging parents. Ooh. How should second generation Asian millennials care for their Asian parents? Should I try to remodel their house? To, uh, should I take them on their vacation they always wanted to go on, but never could afford or never could take the time off to work? I just don't know what I should do with my parents. Yeah, so this one is, actually uh gets more complicated if you live far away from them because i think if you are raising your family within driving distance of your asian aging asian parents then they can still be involved but they're still separate enough where they're not like bugging you every day but you get to see them every week or multiple times a week right a lot of people do dim sum on the week of your canto for example dim sum yeah, on Sunday I mean, with I, the multi-generational thing I, in the city i got a lot of asian friends whose aging parents in the city they'll like take them out for lunch and just like you know take them on a couple nice trips to show appreciation but they still have some separation now, I would say, I mean, it gets more complicated if you live in, like, different states. Right, right, right. Also, it depends on your parents' like lifestyle. Do they have a life outside of you? Are they involved in multiple organizations, whether it's a church or a temple or some sort of, like, elder's home? Um, I'll say this. This, this sounds like a cop-out answer, Andrew. You got to use ChatGPT. David, why? What and, does and Chat you got to pay for 4.0, too. Because I'm saying you could just ask it questions. You could go, listen, I live in Arizona. What is the best places I should take my elderly Asian parents from country X? And sometimes ChatGPT will give you an answer. It doesn't even always give you the perfect answer, but it can give you an answer that you piggyback off of. You, you know what it is? I think what you're saying is ChatGPT is good for like brainstorming ideas no, and just it, getting the, the brain, the ideas flowing of what you can do. I mean- It can't do it for you, right. but it can just give you better- thinking yeah. than like your mailman can for yeah. whatever like somebody uh you could call a local asian lawyer sometimes it's worth it to pay a professional couple hundred bucks for some consultation they basically would be able to tell you what medicaid medicare programs you need to place your parents in what districts or counties may have more favorable policies given their situation these things matter right, right. a lot of people they don't know how to like i guess strategically position their their parents in a situation where it's gonna like alleviate some of the stress on you. Yeah, and this is all assuming that you're not just going to have your parents move in with you because that's the other answer, which is just they live with you, yeah. and then that's it, you and know? For their dream trip, I always say this, man. Nothing can beat going back to Asia with your, with your parents. Well, especially pretty much every Asian country got better. It's not when they left. Dude, it's not like when they left, man. That Honestly, it's just not different now. Um, somebody said, dating as an introvert, I just do not see how it can be solved. Wait, you mean that this is a struggle that they're having? Yeah, this is a guy who may not have super high. He may not look like a model. I'm saying he's very introverted. What's he going to do? Right, because uh, he's probably thinking maybe he's in, let's just say he's in his 30s. He has a little, a good job, but not a great job. Probably not living in a densely populated part of America. Yeah, it's tough, man. Um, I, I would say you got to like, you got to put a little bit of work in yourself. Probably what happened, and this is probably the case for most dudes who feel behind, whether they're Asian or not, but particularly Asian guys, there's like, we're, we're behind in some way, in some way of, of the coaching or the training and the thinking on the mentorship. We're a little bit behind and that's not wrong to say that. It is what you, it is. Yeah, it is what it is, but you just got to acknowledge it 
and then make up for it. And now, glad, luckily, in this day and age, there is so much information, so many connections, so many services, so many ways to connect with people who can help you in that. I would say this, go to Asia and do not confuse being an introvert with just like not having enough attack power in your life to start and complete projects all the way through. I think that sometimes people are like, oh, I'm an introvert. I'm like, that doesn't mean, introvert, it doesn't mean you don't do anything. Yeah, and I would recommend, even if you move to Asia to feel more part of that society there, you still have to try to work hard and meet people in order to make that a successful move or trip. Like, you can't just land in Asia and then you're an all-star. That does not happen. That is not the way it works. Right, right, right. Maybe, you know, more so 20 years ago, but even back then, probably different, to be honest. Um, this guy said that a lot of second-generation Asian Americans like myself, we work hard, we get jobs in well-paying fields, but then we feel bad because our white peers that work in that well-paying field have way more legacy summer homes, destination weddings, uh, legacy admissions to schools. So, in a way, we work so hard, but but then we still don't have what our coworkers have at the consulting firm. Ah, uh, you know what it is? It's kind of, I, David, we have a friend who's from Hong Kong who was working in banking, kind of made his way up. And no, no, he was from a, a very humble family. Very humble family in Hong Kong. Did his thing, made it in America. Uh, but he felt like at his big bank job that he was at, he was feeling limited. And like, he was probably looking at the other people like him and either people were getting promoted above him or the people equal in that position that were American had so much more legacy money. And he's just like, now he's worrying about sending no, his no, kid to No, no, he, he had to school. send money back home to support yeah. multiple people in his family back in Asia. Whereas his same party, even though it was a good job, they were almost like living like they owned the company because they had come from families with such wealth. David, this is a really uh, crazy thing to ask, but do you think American-born Asians can take any pride in their partial immigrant experience. Meaning that you are, get, you are partially an immigrant if you work just as hard as that person and you get a little bit less. That to me is like, you're an immigrant. Right, because you're saying you don't have the vacation home. You don't have the, a legacy crest or something like that. Yeah, because like that. you're starting from zero or starting yeah, from a lot less. Yeah, I do think that that's why you can't, to your point, I don't. I think some people don't want to do that because that gives them an excuse not to reach for the stars, right? But then once you get to a certain level, I do think you have to cut yourself some slack and be like, no, of course, I'm not going to be like as set up as like Bradley, who was also a VP of mine, who was like in a fraternity from a private school in the East Coast. Like my situation is completely different. Why would I hold myself to his what like legacy of multi generational wealth or something like that? Yeah, but, and but obviously do, do that while you start investing in in the right stocks and real estate yeah, and things. Yeah, like and that. listen, I mean that's why obviously some people who can they marry into those families. You know what I mean? But well, that's I, a way to skip it. That is a way to <laughs> skip it. No, shortcut. let's be honest. That's that's a way to get in there. But uh, anyways, if you're working your way up, don't feel bad. You did well for yourself. Uh, the world is not equal, but you know, again, your parents just came here or you came here as an immigrant. So overall you did well then. Right, right, right. You Maybe use your immigrant status to see what Asian stocks yeah. that people would be overlooking that, you know, potentially could catch a bounce depending on the yeah. market. Um, this guy said that I'm an Asian American male. I have social anxiety and I also have autism. Other people were coming through talking about potentially having Asperger's and how that Asian in the Asian world, it might get diagnosed like less because mm. in a weird way, Asians are considered, uh, especially like certain types of Asians, Chinese, more introverted and nerdy anyway. So it's almost like they might not get the, 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 the addressing of those like issues in a younger age. Man, uh, I'm not going to say I have all the solutions, but I guess one, one way is to meet other people like you or be somehow in uh, environments that you feel hyper comfortable in. You know, I, I usually don't recommend this, but like some type of rave, like Asian raves or like very positive zones and, uh, I don't know, maybe there's some medicine you need to take. You know, I mean, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm just saying that uh, issues sometimes require modern solutions. So yeah, yeah, yeah. take and that I, for what I'm saying. Find an online community that is supportive, not negative, not the toxic, you know, whatever victim negative ones. 
find something that's like of people going through a similar thing and then just take a look. Like probably out of a forum of th- uh, 10,000 people, people are going to have like 50 solutions. Pick the solutions that vibe with you that are going to work for your life because obviously you're not going to do all 50 realistically. It's not going to align with you, right? But yeah, a very, very tough situation, man. Everybody's born differently. Other people were just saying, listen, guys, I know a lot of people on this Reddit forum like to talk about race and how we're being viewed, uh, sinophobia or, or the yellow peril again, but... None of that stuff really matters to me, guys. I'm just talking about the cost of buying a home, just the general political stability in America. The government's always fighting proxy wars. The environment, I got kids. What kind of like, are my kids gonna be able to breathe clean air? The future costs of college. You know, just, yeah, I'm just concerned about what everybody else is concerned about. Is AI gonna replace my job? I I guess I would say, you know, if you overly worry about everything that you ever heard of and every single issue that you know exists, it's going to be hyper stressful. And it, you, sometimes you got to just be like, you know, I live in America. I'm not moving. So that, therefore, that means you probably trust America to some extent to not destroy itself in the next 50 years. So certain things you just can't worry about. Yeah, like yeah, certain yeah, thing, yeah. Like if you're not moving, like if you're so concerned about that, you need to move somewhere else. Like I just wouldn't let all those like 50 little things like, oh, no, what no, am I don't, gonna, by the way, though, those are all real things. Those right? are all real things. But is my kid going to breathe regular air in America? No, the air is not that bad. I mean, dude, people got to worry about that in Asia and Bombay and like Beijing. Like those are questions. Right? Well, or like, they, their description, their threshold for worse is way worse than over here. Yeah, but that's why you do well for yourself and you're trying to move your kid to a, a I, at least where you can I, drink I will the say this. I do think that people should analyze like the costs and benefits of like whatever county they're in. Like, I think Asians could do a better job knowing about like uh, local policies of local governments mm. because that can affect like, you know, if you're worried about the cost, cost of child care, your particular county could have 3K or 2K for free. You know, like some another mm. county over only offers kindergarten for free. So you have to pay for preschool. So that could crunch your finances. So even knowing those micro details like that, I think are pretty important. Like I said, pay for consultation. Go ask somebody who knows more than you. Just got to ask people and attack things. Somebody said, I noticed that a lot of my millennial friends that are Asian Americans, we picked high paying careers because we thought that that's what would make us and our families happy. But we realized we couldn't ride out the 40 year, 50 year journey until retirement. And now we're trying to switch. But some of us, are switching into passion careers. Some of us are switching into other high earning careers, but we're having variable levels of transitional success. Mm. What do you think of that, Andrew? Do you know anybody who went through this? Like, you know, like some people, they're working in fashion. Now they're in medical or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, but yeah, some people switch is more successful. I think that uh, just know that you're just one of many, many millions of people who feel that way, right? There's a lot of people who have even decent paying jobs that are not exactly happy about it. Now, like a lot of consultants, a lot of lawyers and consultants. Hey man, I I say this, if you're just okay with the job and it pays the bills, that's not a bad situation. If you hate the job and it's sucking your soul, right? You're saying it's uh, rising cortisol levels every day. Like if it honestly is stressing you out on that level, then you got to switch. But if you're just okay with it and you can find a way to enjoy it, That's not a bad situation, man. Not a lot of people can make decent money at a job that they're okay with. A lot of people hate their jobs. It also depends, too, on, like, what are you filling your time with? Like, some people, they work a job they're just okay with, but then their life outside of their job is, like, fire. Yeah, that's true. And that's how they balance it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So so maybe part of the issue is your outside life, you know? And honestly, I would say for half of these problems right here, I would say uh, try therapy. I bet you haven't gone to therapy. Half of these people. Pay for an expensive therapist, an Asian therapist from a good school, accredited, good good program. Um, Somebody said, personal life, my personal life is going really good, but my lone struggle is not letting all the negativity and current events in the world and the news turn me into a pessimist. Like, you know, being a... Like, they're okay living in their suburb with their friends and their circles, but they're like, I don't know, it just feels like when I look at the news, it seems horrible every youtube video that gets a lot of views about the deep state controlling the infrastructure well david i mean do you have any advice i mean i would say my first advice is uh tune it out turn it off turn off the notifications unsubscribe you mean stop following the details stop following that twitter account that is breaking down why like everything's screwed you know man you don't have to even follow the cnn instagram like i follow it and i'm just thinking about unfollowing cnn 
it's just partially because it's just so much news. And even me, I, I like like the news. I'm really interested you, in the you, news. You, you like the news more than an average person. Dude, is. I'm into the news, man. I'm, I'm kind of into politics, but just interviewed Marianne Williamson. Uh, but nah, even me, sometimes I'm just like, yo, man, just mute this, man. I don't need to see this. Someone said the biggest problems for me have nothing to do with race. I don't care about Asians winning Oscars. I don't care about how we're treated. I don't care about any of this stuff. I don't see any impact in my actual life, but I have ADHD, OCD, and a sleep disorder. How I wish those things could go away. What's the sleep disorder based off? You know, is it breathing? You get into some nasal strips, get your, uh, get those nose clips now that help you breathe better. That really helps. Uh, do you have sleep apnea? I don't know what the sleep disorder is. Maybe like you got deviated septum. It could be a trillion different yeah, things. Yeah, right? you got to stop your blue light consumption at night. You got to turn off your phone an hour uh, before I, you go to sleep. I think a lot of people, not a, dude. Listen, there's problems in the world. I'll tell you this: no amount, ma- no amounts. The most expensive vitamins in the world couldn't change it. The most saunas, cold plunges, nothing could change it. But there is problems that people are making into big problems that could be solved by those things. It yeah. could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, somebody just said, right now, I just feel like nobody cares about Asian Americans in the state I live in. And somebody said, hey, don't worry. Nobody cares about AAPIs in general in any state on a statewide level. I'll tell you this. There is, I'll tell you this. It does feel like on a statewide level, there's nobody who cares about AAPIs. Definitely the country doesn't care about AAPIs. But there is certain cities where it feels like being an AAPI matters. Cities. Yeah, certain cities, certain Municipals. Municipalities, yes. Municipalities. Um, somebody said, I'm just learning to accept trauma than Ryan trying to fix it constantly. That is one thing I realized. I will never fix my things that I was hurt or traumatized by, but I can learn to accept them and live with them. This is what somebody said. Well, you can't fix the past. That's why whatever happened in the past, you just have to, uh, you know, it's kind of like, Something happened, right? But uh, then it gets put into a processor over time, like a machine that processes your trauma and your memories. And it's like, all you can do is kind of like tweak the processor, but you're not going to be able to tweak what's going inside of the processor. Well, especially when you were younger, your life like w- wasn't fully determined by you. Like no, there was I mean, helpless situations. Even to this point, a lot of people's lives are not determined by them. But it's like, the only thing you can do is fix that processor in there and tweak it maybe, or make tweaks to it. But you can't change yo, what's going into yo, it. Yo, Andrew, for the Asian American community, I would hope that we know that it's okay to toy with the plot processor, tweak with the processor. Dude, In fact, I mean, completely factory overhaul, refresh, facelift the processor. I mean, listen, have you ever put together a computer before? A lot of people that are at the age of 28 or over have put together their own PC or at least fixed the PC, at least the, the exterior. The so heat sink do. fan. The yeah. heat sink. Yeah, you ever built your gaming PC? Did you ever do that? If you did that, then that's what you got to do with your brain. Right, right, right. Um, ultimately, I'll tell you this, man. I think self-improvement, there's so many methods. Like, But the thing is, once you pick a method, first of all, Andrew, I think a lot of Asians in our culture, we're discouraged from even thinking about all the methods. So that's okay. an issue. Okay. So we're not even aware of the full array of like playable game characters in Street Fighter 2 Turbo. We didn't know oh, Akuma was available. And then I'm saying not only that, once you pick a method, you have to juice that method, method with like execution power to complete the project. It's not just like, oh, I decided on the method. You have to run that method all the way through to see if it and then beta test it to see if it solved your issue. Yeah. Well, David, what are some things you do to, to work with your struggles? I, I'll say this. Vitamins. Okay. Vitamins, I think, are key. I actually think if everybody analyzed what, uh, you know, they could do a, what's it called? I'm um, sorry. Uh, micronutrient scan. Oh, uh, okay. DEXA scans, et cetera, ah. et cetera, on their body. And they knew where they were lacking. And they took, uh, you know, nowadays vitamins, they got like double dose, triple dose vitamins, even in one pill. If they supplemented the parts they were missing, whether that was B12, D3, et cetera, I think that maybe like 30 to 40% of problems would go away immediately. Wow. So this is an advertisement, guys. Welcome to our sponsor for this video, Dexic Scan. Just kidding. Smala Sauce. It will not say solve your problems, but I mean, it will make your food taste better. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that people might feel like a little bit different. They, they'd be surprised at how much the vitamins would change how they feel about something. Obviously, there are different things happen to different people in life. Yeah. We cannot change it. You know, some people get, your cousin got born into a bad family. The other cousin got born into a really good, loving, yeah. rich family. Who knows? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, but I'm saying the vitamins, they help. Yeah, I mean, honestly, some of that biohacking stuff, I think has helped 
me over the past couple years and like just getting into martial arts. You just got to take some cold showers. You got to find a way to release dopamine healthily. Uh, cortisol all management. Help. Yeah, and you got to talk out your problems, all this stuff. But anyways, guys, you let us know what are some of your struggles as an everyday Asian down below and maybe some ways on how to fix it. You know, hopefully in the comment section, people can draw something from it, not just our advice and advice from the internet, but advice from our fellow viewers. So let us know. Struggles of the everyday Asian in 2024. That's it. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.